Hey everyone, so I put up a tweet earlier tonight saying would anyone be interested if I recorded uh, the Advent of Code, uh, which is a Christmas Advent calendar with coding challenges. I was going to do a couple in Elm anyway. I thought I could instead uh, do them and record them to help you if you're learning Elm, if you're interested in Elm, or you just want to see someone writing some. Uh, I thought this might be quite interesting. I'm not promising to do every day, but I'm going to do day one uh, tonight. I know I'm a bit behind. And I may well do a few more, maybe sticking with Elm or maybe going into some JavaScript as well uh, for different videos. Maybe even use it as an excuse to try other languages I haven't used much before, maybe. Uh, we'll see how it goes. But anyway, I'm going to do day one of Advent of Code today uh, in Elm. And I'll try and talk through any of the bits that I think are quite interesting. Uh, and hopefully if you're new to Elm, I'll try and explain things so it, you don't have to know lots of Elm to find this video interesting. So this is the challenge for today, Chronal Calibration. Uh, I won't read it all out. It's on adventofcode.com. Uh, you can log in and it tracks your progress as well and you can read it all. So what we're taking in here, uh, the device displays frequency changes of plus one, minus two, plus three, plus one. We basically need to sum up this list. So if we get plus one, plus one, plus one, we need to end with a three. Plus one, plus one, negative two ends up at zero. And then minus one, minus two, minus three gets negative six. Uh, so starting with frequency zero, what is the resulting frequency after all the changes have been applied? To begin, get your puzzle input. Uh, the puzzle input is this quite long list. Uh, I'm not sure if this puzzle input is exactly the same for everyone or if it if it changes slightly per account, I don't know. So you may have the same input, you may have slightly different. But anyway, this is clearly a big list that we need to basically walk over, convert all these numbers into actual numbers because we'll get them as strings uh, and, then, and then sum them up. And that's going to be the first part of this challenge. Rather than start with that big long list, we're going to start with a much smaller example. I'm actually going to use Elm test as well. We're going to do this in a test driven manner. So I'm going to write a test that fails and we're going to work through trying to get it passing. So I'm just, we could start with any of these. I'm going to start with one that has both positive and negative numbers, just to make sure we're dealing with that correctly. So I'm going to grab this plus one, plus one, negative two uh, example. And we can see it should result in zero because one plus one is two, then we take away two. So I haven't written any actual code. I've got a main.elm file, which just has a hello world function in just as a boilerplate. And I have a test.elm, which import our main uh, module. And we have a dummy test that expects one to equal one. I can run these with yarn elm test. This works because I've installed elm test as a dependency of this uh, package. And when you put yarn in front of it, it will look in your local node modules to find the ex executable, excuse me. So you can see that this is working at the moment. I'll also put all this code onto GitHub so you can grab it later if you'd like to. So let's say describe day one and we'll say test. It sums up the numbers correctly. And we don't have a function yet uh, in main, but we're going to do that and we'll call it, let's say we'll call it day one. So what we can do is we're going to call main dot, uh, if I won't call it day one, because main, this, this is in the day one folder. So we'll call some, was it calling frequency? In fact, it won't be underscores. I've been writing too much uh, Ruby recently. Main dot some frequency, and we'll give it this list. Plus one, uh, plus one, negative two. Uh, and then what we can do is we can pipe this, if I can do a pipe correctly, into expect dot equal and we are expecting that that is in fact zero. So we're going to get some errors here. The first one is that uh, some frequency isn't found. So let's go into main.elm. Uh, we need to change this to expose a function called some frequency and we'll define some frequency. Uh, it's going to take some input. And for now, we can actually get this test passing by returning zero. So we can also give it a type annotation. So we'll say it's going to take a string and return an int. So let's run the test now. If I clear that and we'll run yarn elm test again. Uh, we are actually passing, but of course we're only passing because I've hard coded the answer to zero. In case you've not seen the pipe operator before, this is the equivalent of saying uh, expect dot equal uh, zero and then main dot sum frequency with uh, the input like this. Uh, I, we could do that. I tend to prefer this, this approach because I think it in, especially in elm tests, more clearly shows you like this is the thing we're testing and this is what we're expecting it to equal. It's a bit easier to read. So if I'm looking at this list here with the input like this, the first thing it looks like we're going to want to do is split this on uh, strings. In fact, let's check the actual input. So here I'm using commas, but I think if we go back uh, to our actual input, this is actually new lines. So I think what we're actually going to want to do is split on new lines, given that eventually our actual input is going to be that. Tell you what, let's actually take the top three lines here um, and we'll say, we'll just define a function up here called dummy input. 
and this is just going to be the, that string. Uh, one, two, three. I think I've got enough there. And let's do it. Let's see what Elm format does there. So triple strings in Elm are kind of multi-line quotes. And you see uh, Elm format is putting that one there and leaving those in. So what I actually want to say is some frequency uh, dummy input. And this is, means when I paste in the big long list into Elm and we have all the new lines, that will be replicated. There was no point writing a test where the numbers are formatted like this when our actual input isn't formatted like that. So dummy input. And of course, it's now not going to be zero. We can do plus five. So we'll do five minus 11 plus 17. We expect to get 11 uh, back. Uh, and now if we run the test, of course, this is going to fail. We can see what that looks like. See there, expect or equal, we expected zero. Um, sorry, we expected 11, but we got zero. Okay, so that's better. We can now look at how we start to split this input. I think I'm going to split it on new lines. So what we can do is actually go into the Elm REPL and see how we might start to do this. So I'm actually going to type Elm REPL start. This is the VS Code Elm plugin. It just runs it for me in a separate terminal tab. And I think we have a function called string.split, I want to say. There we go, and it's a function that takes two strings and returns a list of strings. So I want to convert this uh, this input here into a list of strings. So I want to take this and end up with a list of plus five and then minus 11 and so on. So I think we're gonna to want to do uh, string.split. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our input. Uh, I'm just gonna do this in a let block for now. We'll say new input called string.split. Uh, you can see I get help there. So we give it the separator first and then the list. So my separator that I want to split on is going to be a new line, and the list is going to be input. Uh, I'm still just going to hard code return of zero, but what we can now do is say debug.log new input, new input. Uh, and what's the error there? Oh, we can't just have a debug.log line, we need to assign it to a variable. So I'll assign it to underscore, which is the way of telling Elm, like, assign this to a thing, but we don't really care about it. So if I go back to my other terminal tab, and we run yarn Elm test, uh, you can see that we get our new input logged here. So we're doing some things well here. We've, we've got each bit individually, but you can see we also have empty uh, items at the beginning and end as it split uh, and kind of produce an empty thing. So we're, we're going to need to filter those out. So we can start doing that. And now what I'm actually going to do is start um, writing this function properly using a pipeline. So we're going to take our input and then we're going to string dot split it on new lines. That gives us a list. And I'm now going to do a list dot filter and this will keep elements that satisfy the the function we give it uh, elm if we go back to the REPL has a function i think it's called string dot empty no but elm's compiler is useful enough to tell me other potential matches so we have string dot is empty and we want to keep items of our list that aren't that so we want to get rid of the empty ones so what we can say is we can say list dot filter and we're going to take in an item in the list this is an anonymous function in elm and we're going to say uh, string.empty item equals false. So we want items that aren't empty. And then after that, we're going to get our new input here. And we're going to have to do more steps to this. But for now, I'm just going to define an inline function that takes the input. Or let's say new input. Uh, and this is again is for the benefit of logging. So we're going to say let underscore equals debug.log new input, new input. Uh, in and we'll just have in zero, which means we'll just return zero from this function. Great. And string.empty, I've made the same mistake. It is empty there. Okay, so let's head back into our REPL, clear this out, run Elm test. Okay, and there you can see the new input now is just the things we actually specified. There's a bit of tidying up here. We can do string.isEmpty item equals equals false. What we can do is actually wrap a not. Uh, around this bit so we can say not string dot is empty item and do that let's just check that this still works uh, and i've probably missed a bracket and i have there we go great so that still works uh, and we can go one step further here because in elm you can compose functions so let's create a function called string not empty and it's going to take a string which i'll call str and this will just return uh, string uh, str string dot is empty and then it will pass it into not so now we can say list dot filter item and we can change this line to be string not empty item just for a minute i'm going to run yarn elm test dash dash watch which will watch for changes and rerun so you see there we've got our new input still but we can do this we can take this even further string 
not empty str is actually just composing these two functions, string dot is empty and not. So what I can actually do is write this in what's called a point free style, where we don't actually re refer to the variable that we're passing in, we just compose functions. So we want to call string dot is empty, but then uh, compose it with the not function. And that should have the same result. And you can see we get the new input uh, there still. And now we have this, we can also make another change where list.filter item, uh, when, you, when you have an anonymous function that's taking one argument and just passing it to another function, in Elm you can always replace that with just the function. So we can say string not empty there. And we'll let that run again, and we get the new input again. Uh, now what I would do, rather than create this string not empty as a separate function, is I would just compose this inline. So I'd say string dot is empty, and then compose it with the not function. And we can delete this definition here. So that's a really nice way to, to take a function that you want, like string dot is empty, and just reverse it by composing it with the not function. So now we have the new input, what we're going to need to do is pass those as integers. And again, I'll go back into the Elm REPL. Can I clear this somehow? Um, uh, control L. So in Elm, we have a function called string dot from int. String dot from int uh, takes an int and return a string. Uh, we actually want the re reverse, sorry, we want integer from string. So we can say string dot to int. That takes a string and notice it returns a maybe. The reason it returns a maybe is in Elm, there's no concept of nil or undefined or really any form of errors or exceptions. In Elm, you have to deal with the, both the good case and the bad case. And this means if I do string dot to int on some nonsense, we're going to get nothing back. And this is a maybe type. But if I do string dot to int on one of our inputs, like plus two, we're going to get just two. So what we need to do is we need to convert everything in our list to an integer, but then get rid of anything that's a nothing. We just want to keep the values that were actually successful. Now, of course, we know that our input from advent of code is valid, that they're not going to give us bad input, but Elm doesn't know that. So it's still going to make us guard against it. Though this might seem a bit of a faff for an exercise like this, in general, as you're building Elm apps, this is actually really beneficial. You can never have an error case that you forgot to deal with because Elm makes you deal with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue our pipeline in here and we're going to say uh, we filtered it. So what we're going to do now is we can do list.map and we're going to pass in a function. And the function we want to map over is string.toint. We want to take every item in this array, or sorry, list, uh, and convert it to an integer. So let's do that, I'll hit save. Let me toggle back to this uh, terminal here. And you can see now our new input is three just. It's just five, just minus 11, and just 17. What we need to do now is, is get rid of those just. We need to just turn it into the actual uh, values themselves. The list module has a function called filter map. What filter map does is it does the exact same thing, but it will discard any values that ends up being a nothing and pull out any values that ended being adjust any of the valid values. So if I swap this map for filter map and head back into where our tests are running here, you can see we now have new input five, negative 11, and then 17. So we're almost there now. What we now need to do is just go through these and sum them up. We could do this recursively, uh, or we could use a reduce or a fold function, which is what we're gonna do. So again, let's go back to get uh, docs in the REPL. We can say list dot, uh, is there a list dot reduce? There isn't, but there's a list dot fold L, which means fold from the left. And that is uh, exactly what we want. So it takes a function that takes the thing we're iterating over. Uh, B here is the accumulator. It takes an initial accumulator value uh, and it takes the list that we need to reduce. So we're going to go here and say list dot fold left. Uh, and we're going to take in the current value. Uh, let's just put this in brackets, current value and the accumulator, which we'll call ACK. And this is the function that's going to do the summing. For now, we'll just return uh, accumulator. We then need to pass in the initial value, which is going to be zero, because we want to start the sum at zero. And then we don't actually need to pass in the actual list because that's being passed in from the pipeline for us. So let's save that. Uh, you can see I've made a mistake here. Something went wrong. I was expecting a closing paren. What have I done wrong here? I actually, sorry, I don't think I want that. Uh, that, I think we can get away with that. Yeah, pretty doesn't seem, uh, sorry, not pretty, Elm format isn't erroring now. So I just had a few too many brackets going on there. Oh no, to lie, we've still got issues uh, right down the bottom here. So let's, um, so there's our, oh, I'm missing a closing paren around my uh, anonymous function. Great. So you see now we're logging new input zero. That's because we're returning the accumulator and it starts at zero. 
just to show you what would happen here, if I returned current value, what we'll get is we'll get the last value from our input, which is 17. So what we actually want to return is the accumulator plus the current value starting at zero. And you can see we now get new input 11. And now what we can do is we can just get rid of this final bit where we're logging out the input and just hit save. And now for the first time we are onto a green test. So we have successfully done uh, the first exercise. So in the Elm REPL I can import main. Oh, whoops. Import main. I think I already did it just in case. And we now have access to our actual Elm code. So let's go back to the browser and let's grab all this input. Uh, and we'll try and do it in here. We'll see if this works. So although you can't do this in real Elm, in the REPL you are allowed to just define variables. So we're going to say input equals, uh, and I'm not convinced this is going to work, but we're going to try it. We're going to try quote all of that. No, okay. That, that was a very bad idea. Let's, uh, dear, I'm really regretting doing this. All right, let's leave that going. And what we'll do is we'll actually do this in line here. So we'll say puzzle input equals three quotes there, uh, another two there. And we'll paste that in there. Oh, you see, there's a thousand lines of it. So that's why the REPL is still going wrong. I really want to stop this REPL. There's no Elm REPL stop just to start. Okay, let's. Uh, that was a bad plan. Let's close that terminal and we'll leave that out. So we have our big uh, puzzle input all the way here, which is a huge file. So let's save that. And the test run is still passing. There's no reason for it not to pass. Uh, and what we can do now is actually we'll start a new REPL. Uh, and in here, what we'll do if I get rid of this terminal warning, we'll import main um, and Oh, this isn't going to work because we have our puzzle input not exposed. So let's expose. In fact, let's just, what we'll do is we'll just create a function called, um, we'll say part one, and it's going to equal uh, some frequency on our puzzle input. And I'll expose up here some frequency and part one. Uh, if I import main again, are we going to get main.part one? Yeah, and it is 543. So let's go and see if that's correct. So we're going here. Go five, four, three. That's the right answer. You're one gold star closer to fixing the time stream. Excellent. 